Okay, we're going to take a look at a topic that is perfect for debating in class. We're talking about the ethics of therapeutic stem cell use. So just to be clear, uh, stem cell usage can come in two forms. You can call it reproductive cloning or you can call it therapeutic cloning. Reproductive cloning is the obvious one. It's like making all the clones, you know, exact replicas of yourself or your puppy or a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But for therapeutic stem cell use, we're talking about using stem cells to help cure diseases and help people by using therapeutic methods. So they're called stem cell therapies, basically. So ethics are moral principles where you have to decide if something is right or wrong. It's a very human um, endeavor. And it's important for scientists to consider because everything that scientists do can often have consequences that could be good and bad. So when talking about stem cells, this is a perfect place to discuss this. So we have this in the form of a flowchart here. So the main pro argument for therapeutic stem cell use is that you can decrease suffering in patients who have diseases and incurable conditions. You can help improve their lives. That's the main idea there. The con arguments or the arguments that go against therapeutic stem cell use depend on the source of stem cells. And nowadays, we have adult stem cells and we have embryonic stem cells and when this stuff first came out it was embryonic stem cells that really caused all the controversy or the controversy so uh, actually when we're talking about using adult stem cells no one really has an issue with that so it's kind of a area that people and scientists are trying to develop but there are some limitations from using adult stem cells which you're not going to discuss right here but uh, you'll find out you find that out when you're researching or watching a video about the source of some of these types of cells. Um, stem cells are in the news all the time. You're going to find out all about that kind of stuff. Some recent Nobel Prizes have been given out uh, regarding um, induced pluripotent stem cells as well too. So the con arguments, like I said, depend on the source of the stem cells. If it's adult stem cells, everyone's pretty cool with that. But if it's embryonic stem cells, then concerns get raised because we're talking about taking stem cells from humans who have not yet fully developed and have the potential to turn into new life and then a lot of arguments uh, will break up from here so let's take a look a little bit further so if it's from embryonic stem cells some people say killing the embryo so if you take the stem cells from this embryo then the embryo won't be able to develop into a new human life so killing the embryo as a result of the procedure may not be worth it so the reason why is because to a lot of people even if that embryo hasn't developed any nervous system or any uh, beating heart cells or anything like that, it's still potentially a life, therefore it is a human life. Therefore killing it is like taking life away. So there are some counter arguments that exist. So some of them are exactly the opposite of what I just said. An embryo hasn't developed beating heart cells and it hasn't developed a nervous system. Um, whether it knows that it actually exists that's arguable as well too, but the fact that it hasn't differentiated and turned into anything that resembles a human form or human's ability to feel pain or make decisions or think means that perhaps it's not you know that big of a deal at that point. Um, no nervous system has developed yet. We just mentioned that, so no pain. And there are other arguments as well too. Uh, the process of in vitro fertilization actually produces large numbers of embryos. So for a couple who's trying to have a baby, but they can't do it through a traditional method and they have to get some kind of uh, assistance to do that, a lot of extra embryos will be produced. And you know, if they only used a few of them and they were successful and they get to have a baby, the woman becomes pregnant, what do you do with all those extra embryos? So most of the times they just get discarded or the question is, instead of discarding them or destroying them, why not just use them for some stem cell research? And so that is a question that comes up. So it could potentially save lives by researching with them instead of just discarding them if they're gonna be thrown away anyways. And another fairly interesting argument is this idea that if those embryos were produced for the purpose of research, then that individual wouldn't have existed anyways, right? So that's that's kind of one of the, the arguments they're saying. If we actually created the embryo for the purpose of research and not for making a new human being, then that thing wouldn't have been uh, produced anyways. So no individual that would have had the chance to live 
has been denied life is what one of the counter arguments is. So this is kind of a, a bare bones version of the arguments that exist uh, related to stem cells used for therapeutic purposes. And you can see most of them come from the use of embryonic stem cells as opposed to adult stem cells. So just to reiterate, one of the limitations of using adult stem cells is some of them, for example, uh, adult blood stem cells in the bone marrow have the potential to turn into other cells, but they're limited in what they can turn into. They can only turn into other types of blood cells unless some kind of re-engineering is done. And that's what people are trying to do as well too. How do you take something that has the ability to only turn into a few dozen types of cells and trick it so that it's able to turn into other types of cells that it wasn't intended to. And so that's the idea here. But with embryonic stem cells, because they're embryonic and every one of the cells in my body came from my cells when I was an embryo, embryonic stem cells have the ability to differentiate into every single possible type of the several hundred types of cells. So the idea here is that using embryonic stem cells could yield you know, greater success with uh, creating stem cell therapies. And so therefore, these are the arguments uh, that exist with relation to this particular topic. So good thing to debate about. Whatever your own personal feeling is, I guess, at least for the syllabus, you need to understand both sides. But in general, for anything that you disagree with, if you have very strong feelings about a particular morally uh, challenging or an ethical issue, it's always good to try to really understand the counter arguments that exist. And that'll help you to solidify your own feelings or, you know, be like a scientist, stay open minded and, you know, allow yourself to hear other counter arguments so that you can really trust your own feelings and, and decide what you think is the best way forward for science and for humanity. Go humans.